All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Melissa Kirk, who is just up the coast in the San Francisco area. How are you doing, Melissa? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for asking. Absolutely. And Melissa runs a consulting company called Melissa Kirk Consulting, offering comprehensive capabilities and deep industry knowledge to help solve your most complex issues. But we're going to talk about a very simple one today, um, at least on the surface. And that is, are you made for sales? So, Melissa, when somebody, when, uh, when somebody asks that question, is somebody made for sales? What's your answer? Well, I think anybody can learn to be a salesperson. You know, there's a lot of strategies and it can definitely be a learned skill. Um, some of the work that I do is I really help people to understand naturally what they're designed to do. And it's based on a human design um, chart. And there's definitely indicators in the chart of whether or not it's natural for you. But I think that... Um, Anyone that is interested in solving a problem and cares to listen and connect with their client, I think anyone can be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. So what are the, um, and I would agree with you on that, yeah, and, uh, you know, research has, has, has shown that, but let's get back, what are some of the, what are some of the characteristics, though, when you talk about, the, like, the assessment, what are some of the characteristics that really stand out? If you saw those, you would say, oh, my goodness, you would make a great salesperson. Well, for one thing is just the, somebody's ability to connect with others. You know, one of the biggest part of sales is doing business with someone you like, you know, mm -hmm. even, even if there's a better product somewhere else or at a cheaper price somewhere else, we tend to do business with people that we know, like, and trust. And so if you are great at really um, connecting with your client and getting into their needs and seeing from from their perspective, I think that's the most important part of it. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I would agree with you. And I think it's becoming, I mean, I think it's always been important, but I think it's becoming more and more important because, well, because of the uh, experience that we've all been through with COVID. And even prior to that, I think that people were starting to get tired of, uh, you know, technology may be getting in the way of that of that connection as opposed to enhancing it or supporting it. So I think we're at a time now when people are really looking for those kind of for that kind of authenticity from somebody they're going to do business with. Yeah, I would agree. And I think that, you know, product knowledge or service knowledge is a big part of it. But, you know, really having an understanding for somebody and then letting them be seen. I think people are really, really wanting that personal touch. You know, I know when I call a service provider and I want, all I want to do is keep hitting the zero so I could talk to a person, right? We don't want yeah, automation yeah. anymore. We want somebody to listen to us. We want somebody that relates to us and is interested in solving our problem, not interested in selling you something, but interested in solving your problem. And I think if you, if you figure out how to connect that way with people, that your sales will go through the roof. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, and I think, and I think that's an interesting uh, topic as well. Is so there's a lot more selling being done virtually today, naturally, uh, and I think that's going to remain the case. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, and I think even some people who traditionally have sold face to face, I think a lot of companies are going to say. Well, you know, you've managed to do it virtually. Why should you travel? Why should we pay all that money, all that time out of the office? So learning how to connect to people virtually is becoming a skill as well that people need to uh, need to adapt to. Yeah. And I don't think things are going to ever go back to the way they were. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, we are going to be a much more virtual and less contact. So, you know, it takes more effort. There's there's something to be said when you're sitting in someone else's energy in the way that unconsciously we we connect. So, um, you know, one of the things I I have a business degree, but I also have a psychology degree, and I really mm -hmm. think that that helps to be relatable to people and really like get to know what's going on for them. So, um, 
And yeah, and I think that's a key point that you just touched on there, though, is, is that relatability and the and the authenticity and, and that. And the thing is, you can't really fake that. You have to actually make a commitment, as you said earlier, you've got to make a commitment to being actually interested, interested to learn, uh, ask good questions, you know, listen, interpret things or whatever, validate things. But I think it's, I, I, you, you can't, you can't fake that, right? No. It is really about authenticity. When you do fake it, people know. Uh -huh. if you're just kind of listening and you're not paying attention. You know, you're asking questions, but you don't really care what the answer is. And then your response back is non-responsive to what they just said their problem was. Yeah, you know, no, one, it, it, exactly. One of, one of the tricks too is that a lot of times people are talking about things that are kind of symptoms from a bigger problem, you know? So like when I'm working a lot with my clients, you know, they may say they don't have enough money or they may say that they're having trouble losing weight or they're, you know, they can't keep a business partner or whatever, but really that's symptoms, right? So you have to be good at going below, like what's causing this? What, what is someone getting out of it and dealing with that problem? And, you know, that takes another level of commitment and listening, definitely. Yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned that because one of the things and one of the traps I think people and um, says people often fall into is just what you said there is you and I could have a conversation and then you mention a, a, a couple of issues or problems, or whatever, and I dive in immediately and I go, great, great, yeah, Melissa has mentioned something that I think I can fix here, so I'm right in there. Um, but if I had gone a little further, I might discover that, yeah, it's an issue, but it's an issue you can live with. There's a far deeper issue that's probably an even bigger engagement for me if I can solve it, if I took, if I had the time and patience to go that level deeper. Yeah. And I think, you know, once, if you take the time on the front end and they build the trust with you, then they'll buy whatever you're selling after that, you know, and it's not going to be about price. It's going to be about the relationship. And so I think that's the key thing. When somebody comes in to sell you something, you know, people like to buy stuff but they don't want to be sold to, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just come in with that kind of energy, it, it's not that appealing. So I think that, you know, spending the time on the front end to build relationships is really what's going to build your ability to sell going forward. Yeah, because it is, I mean, it's a strange, it, it, it's a strange paradox, if you like, people love to buy, but they hate to be sold to. Um, and and again, it's, again, it's, it's, it's interesting, because I, I think part of it is, this idea of patience and learning the patience to be able to have these conversations and to be able to ask questions. And the other thing, and I think this is particularly uh, true, uh, and probably more people are falling into it now when they're doing it virtually, is sometimes says people are afraid of silence, right? So if I ask you a question, and then you don't answer immediately because, hey, you might actually need to think about the question, but I dive in immediately and fill the dead air because I just get all freaked out that there's a, there's a silence. That can really undermine things. Yeah, well, that's actually when you, as the salesperson, ask a question and there's dead space, it's important not to break the silence. The first person to talk is the one that loses, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pressure. That silence feels pressure and makes them like have to deal with what's going on internally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it also shows, I mean, it also shows that you're not, you know, exactly. I mean, it also undermines your question because why ask a question and then sort of clarify it and almost answer it yourself? Yeah. No, they want, and you know, it is good to be thoughtful and allow someone to think about their answer. You get a more authentic answer and then you can more authentically address the problem. So, mm -hmm. but it is funny how some people can really not handle that silence. I know. No, really, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's funny. And then, like I said, I mean, it's true on, on, on virtual and people get even more freaked out. And the other interesting thing, Melissa, is uh, even, even some sales people who maybe in the past have been fantastic like face to face they go and work a room they walk in they're all confident they love all that stuff mm -hmm. but some of them have like frozen on zoom and i don't mean zoom is frozen i mean they have frozen they don't even like turning on their cameras they do they feel <laughs> totally i mean it's such a it's such a strange dichotomy yeah it is so i mean and i think that that comes with the feeling also that you always have to have the answer you always have to say something or you know, instead of just one of the part of sales is, you know, no matter how much sales training you go through, 
it's an organic process. It doesn't, everybody doesn't, you know, you ask question A, it doesn't always, the next question is not always B that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. So you really do have to think on your feet. And I think that, you know, sometimes in person it is, it's a different feeling. You feel like a different connection than over Zoom. So you take a little longer to build that rapport. And yeah, yeah. people do have stage fright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. And I think that's just the other element, just like authenticity and what you were talking about is trust. And that is obviously the, the, the most fundamental thing to try and, and build. And I think sometimes um, some people don't put enough thought or effort into the trust building component. Yeah. You know, what I found is that the, when I build a relationship and people trust me, they do whatever I say, you know, they will take whatever advice I have and they may not understand it. They may think it sounds crazy, but I have my clients that I've been working for for a while. And she, the, I have one client that always tells me if I didn't know you better, I would never do what you're telling me to do. But I know if I do it, it will work because mm. she trusts me. I mean, I, you can't really bypass that piece of it. No, and I, and I think there are, um, and as you mentioned the, uh, you know, that you have a psychology background, there's, there's, there's a lot of psychology involved in building that kind of trust, right? Yeah. And I think one of the biggest aspects of sales is building rapport and using the language of the person that's talking to you. You know, if they say one word and you switch it to mean another word, it may not mean the same thing to them. So it's really about repeating back it's really, that's how they feel like that they were heard. And mm -hmm. then matching, you know, if they're a rapid person, you got to keep up with their pace. If they're a calm, cool, collected person, don't bombard them. They're, they can't handle your energy and it will break rapport. So I think that, you know, the number one thing you learn in sales is rapport and is listening and is reflecting back. Yeah. And I love what you just said there about the, uh, about different types of people, because I think that's so critical is that you've got to look at how people consume information. As you said, there are the, there are the people who, who just want the, the 40,000 foot view. They're not a detailed person. There's a person who absolutely wants to go 40,000 miles below the surface because they're highly, highly analytical. Um, and if you are not adapting your communication style to the person who's on the receiving end, um, you know, you're in trouble. Yeah. I know I learned, um, I was taking some NLP classes and one of the things that they had you answer all these questions to figure out, are you visual? Are you audio? Mm -hmm. Or you, you know, do you want the data? And, you know, I was pretty equal across all of them. And so I didn't even realize my own process of really t honing in on what their process is so I can meet that, you know, cause they're, I'm a real like science person. I like to know how stuff works. <laughs> But some people just don't care. They just want to know mm -hmm. what works and they're in. And other people, if you just say, oh, trust me, they're like, well, wait a minute, where's where's the evidence? And where's, you know, <laughs> so I like that because I can do both. And right. but it's important. It's finding out what they're what they are about. And you know, it takes time. There's no bypass for that. You got to get in there and just listen and see how they react to stuff and what questions they have. Absolutely. And the other point that you made there a few moments ago was that idea of validating. And, and, and I think that is so critically important because how, how often have you walked away from an interaction and just thought, you know, I didn't really understand that, or I'm not sure they really answered my question. And then you're filled with all this doubt that could easily have been assuaged had the person just repeat it back to you and validate it and said, hey, Melissa, just, just to be clear, you said this, it, it was, is that correct? That's, that's my understanding of that. Am I, am I correct here? Right. Yeah, because if you, if you repeat back to them their exact meaning, then they do. They're like, oh, they get me. They understand me. And I can trust them that they're going to actually answer the problem that I have. Yeah. It's, it's really fun. You know, I used to really avoid the sales and not like it, but I really like getting, when you come from a place of wanting to help people and really connect with what they are, and it's not about the sales, you sell more because my goal isn't just to have you buy something. My goal is for you to transform. And so right. when your sales comes from that, they know, they know, and they will respond differently. Yeah, and I think that's a, and I think that's such an important point. There is, is the fact that number one, 
you know, you believe in your product or service. Uh, you really want to have you believe that it will make a difference and it will help these people. And if you come from that point of really believing in your product, believing that it can help and wanting to, as you say, help transform uh, that person's uh, business, whatever whatever problem you're solving, that 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 creates a different energy inside of you. Yeah, it does. And I think that um, it's a, an important distinction. And I think people know when you're after the sale versus after you're being after, you know, making a difference. It really mm -hmm. is, it's a whole different process. And, you know, I've, I've, there's been times when I've chosen not to work with people. Right. I don't feel that we're a match or I don't feel like I can really solve the problem in the way that they want to. And I feel like, you know what, that's, that's important too, because you know what, when people work with me, they get results because I only do it with the right people, you know? And I think the biggest, one of the biggest lessons I learned was how to walk away and that it's not always mm. about the clothes and the numbers because then there's yeah. more satisfaction for you, right? As a provider that their needs were met and not this that you made money. And and the reality is that if you walk away or you say to somebody like I I honestly I don't think my solution is the right one for you or we're not the right fit or anything, um, as we talked about earlier, that also builds a huge level of trust and integrity and that and you never know that that person may have somebody else or know somebody and say actually yeah it didn't work out for me but you should talk to this person because I really like them and they seem really honest and whatever, so sometimes actually walking away can increase your reputation yes and i have gotten i have one person in particular i mean i've gotten referrals from several people that you know we didn't really do much work together they just mm -hmm. kind of listened to my platform but i have one in particular that um she has referred me probably 20 different people and i never worked with her specifically so it is yeah Look at that. I mean, that's such a fantastic example to finish on here, Melissa. So I just want everybody to hear that you got almost 20 referrals from somebody you never did business with. So um, that shows you the power of being authentic, the power of walking away when necessary, being honest, the integrity part is just no substitute for that. Right. Well, listen, this has been great, Melissa. Thank you so much for talking to us today. All of Melissa's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Okay. Yeah, I started, um, you know, I started in high school really trying to connect people and work with them and help them through their problems. And I built a program in my high school. And then it's kind of always been the theme through my life. And then I went to school for a psychology degree. I've always wanted to help people. And so, you know, that's my that's what gives me the most satisfaction is in life is helping people to understand who they are and what their approach should be and what their formula for success is and then helping them implement it. So, you know, I've gone through, I've owned several different businesses and I do several different types of work in my business that really gets people to own their potential, see themselves for who they are and then create the most success that's you know, in their design and in their makeup. So it's really rewarding. And I love just working with people, taking them to the next level. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love it. Um, again, thank you, Melissa, for today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.